Hi, everyone, and um, thank you for joining me. I decided to pop in live today, and I wanted to speak a little bit more about our purpose because I noticed after I did the video last week about our purpose, we have been having a lot more questions from people asking for more clarity as to how to find their purpose. And I'm going to do this live video a little bit different from normal. I'm going to ask the lovely Abby, who is behind the scenes assisting me, to actually shout out not only your questions, but also a couple of the questions that we want to kick off with, which are from my last video. But I am already realizing that a lot of your questions come from the fact that people think in terms of their purpose. They think from the limitations of their culture and their surroundings, but also we think in terms of the purpose is our vocation, our job, or we have a huge grandiose plan of, I'm gonna change the world, I'm gonna be super famous. None of these are actually our purpose, and I'll go into that deeper, but I'm just gonna to turn to Abby for a second. Abby, um, was there something specific from the last one that you wanted me to quickly touch on? So the specific question is, why is it so hard to find our purpose? And a lot of the comments are saying, I know I'm supposed to be a vet, or I know I'm, supp I'm supposed to book, or I know I'm supposed to do exactly what you said, something so grandiose. So why is it so hard to find your purpose, Anita? <laughs> Thank you. So here's the reason why we struggle with finding our purpose. When we're looking for our purpose, we are looking in the wrong place. So we end up looking at places like, how can I impact the world? Or what can I do to serve other people? Which is all great. We want to serve other people. But do you know that the best way to impact the world or to serve other people is to do it from the inside. It's to do it from our own heart and our own passion. So the first step before serving anyone else is to go inward and find your own passion. And your passion could be anything like you love animals. Maybe that's your passion. Um, or you just love writing or you had an amazing thing happen to you and you feel the world needs to know about this amazing thing. So don't think in terms of how you're going to impact the world or how big you're going to be or what you're going to do with your purpose. First, just find out what makes you feel really passionate. Like what's going to make you feel that when you get out of bed in the morning, you you'll feel that I can't wait to do this. It could be even something like maybe you just love working with people on their issues or their relationship problems. Maybe you're thinking in terms of being a relationship counselor or a relationship mediator, or as I said earlier, like, or you, you just have this love for animals. So when you just figure out what that one little thing is, that just fuels you where if you know that there are people who are going to be booked there in front of you today, who are going to want your, your help, your mediation, your advice for their relationship or their issues, or if you know there are going to be animals there that need your help, that is what would get you out of bed in the morning, then in some small way, figure out how to follow that thread even if it's in a small way of just helping animals. What happens is that as that passion starts to get ignited, as you start to do that thing more and more, it could be just helping animals in your local community. What could end up happening slowly as your path unfolds, then uh, things, opportunities come your way. But the key here is not you trying to figure out what can I do? I need to be famous. I feel I need to be famous or I feel I need to change the world. When you think that way, you are actually coming from a place of fear, lack, insecurity, because you're kind of thinking, I'm over here. I'm helpless. I'm so far away from my purpose. I don't know how to get there. So the energy you're putting out is the energy of lack, scarcity, fear, would you also say it's seeking validation in a way when you start being, how am I changing the world? How am I doing this? It's 
It's looking for the approval of others or the recognition of others as opposed to satisfying yes. your own soul. Nice one. Exactly. You're still seeking the approval of others. And even just to go back to what you were saying about how do you help animals in your community, if that's what you're passionate about, maybe it's even smaller than that. Maybe you live somewhere like California and you leave out a bowl of water because the birds don't get that much rain. And yeah. it's like, that is a little step that you can do. And it's still going to lead you down the same path. It's These things can just be so close to home. Yes. And it also means you could even volunteer at an animal foster care, foster a pet for a little while. And there are all kinds of things you can do that just to feed that passion. Because here's what happens is that when we ignite the passion, and this is what you're trying to get, you're trying to let that passion flow of what you love doing. And as that passion flows, it changes your energy state. As that energy state changes, that's when your outer circumstances start to change. And that's when your life's purpose starts to unfold. But don't go chasing the, the big dream. Let it come to you because it may come to you in a way that you have never imagined. Don't put expectations on it. It may come to you in a way that's even more glorious than you had ever imagined. And that leads perfectly into the second most asked question we've been getting, which is why is it so hard to follow our purpose? And maybe that's because we're getting caught up in something that isn't actually our purpose, but we almost want it to be our purpose or? Yes, um, definitely. So there's many reasons why it can be really hard to follow your purpose. One is that you might get caught up in the in the things that are not your purpose, in the trappings of the purpose. Um, so here's like uh, one way that I can think of. For example, imagine if your um, purpose was somehow to help people to do something. It was just to help people in a certain area of your life. Like maybe you are somebody that has an affinity for um speaking or talking about healing, or maybe you are an intuitive or something like, like that. And you are just someone who just really wants to, you start out as someone who really wants to help people with your intuition or helping them to uh, connect with their deceased loved ones. And as you are helping people on an individual level, you start by helping the people around you and word gets out that you're really good at it. And as you grow, you may, this is something that many of us fall, you know, at any time we can fall into this, you may fall into the trap of getting more involved in the trappings of it, you know, in the, uh, oh my gosh, um, uh, I, I want to become even more well known. And then you go chasing after the wrong things, the trappings of what this is this new found fame brings with it. The idea is to always stay with the passion, always remember your original values. And I hope this is making sense and I hope I'm articulating it properly because one of the things that I always, always remind myself is the original values. What is it that I am actually trying to do? I am trying to share my story because I don't want people to have to go through what I went through. And, and let your original values drive you instead of other values like, oh, I need to make more money or I need to do this. Let all those things take care of themselves. And all you have to do is keep your own passion ignited. Abby said something earlier, which I really love. She told me to actually remind people that your purpose is for you. We sometimes make the mistake of either thinking, my purpose is to serve the world, so let me figure out what the world needs. No, you, you serve the world best when you are at, uh, when your cup is full and you are at full passion. That's when you serve the world best. The other thing also is that you serve the world best when you are doing and living your full purpose because you are the one that's going to be healthier, happier. And the reason why you are 
lost at the moment is because you've never allowed yourself to find your purpose. And I know there was one more reason that has left my mind, but it will come back. No, I think that this is so perfect. I love what you said about the trappings of purpose. And we see that, we saw that in so many comments where it's exactly what you're saying. People are saying, I'm meant to be an author. That is my purpose. And it's like, actually, what exactly what you said, your purpose is to share your story. Yes. That doesn't necessarily translate to your job is now being an author. Yes. And that's, or my purpose is to be a vet. No, your purpose is to help animals because that's what brings you joy. And that is, you know, Anita, you've said this once or twice about being your authentic self and how <laughs> once that falls into place, everything falls into place. That's exactly right. It is about being your authentic self. And a lot of people forget about that, that the most important thing is to be your authentic self. And I said this last week, and I shouldn't be repeating it, but I will. I didn't set out to be an author and a speaker. And I don't like to box myself into, say, into saying, when people say, so what do you do? Uh, I write, I speak, but I am not an author and a speaker. I'm much more than that. And so are you. And that's my point. Um, I am someone who has a message that I want to share. And being an author, being a speaker, being on YouTube, being a YouTuber, is these are just tools. I, I don't consider myself a YouTuber, but I use YouTube as a tool. I use writing books as a tool. I use speaking uh, uh, on stages as a tool. All of these are tools. Being a vet is a tool for you to help animals. Um, so it is really about you finding your passion and being yourself and then allowing the purpose to unfold. And when you are following that passion, the universe somehow does, I'm going to say bless you. The universe blesses you with an opportunity to for you to actually live that passion, expand that passion. But your only work is to be yourself and find your passion. So we have a comment from YouTube and it says, is part of our purpose, so, is part of our purpose to remember who we eternally truly are, that we're loving eternal light beings. Yes. Just living inside an ego world. And I think that's exactly it. It's your purpose is coming back to you. It really is. Your purpose is coming back to you. And don't limit your purpose to being a job or one of the tools you use to, to, to get your message out into the world. Um, tools purpose... is the perfect, is the perfect way to say it. You're sorry. Yeah, go you, ahead, but Abby. No, I just, I think tools is a perfect way of saying it. It's everything in this world is just a tool and it comes back. It always comes back to self. Um, I did have another question from YouTube though, which was how can we tell where we're, when we're in a trapping is there a feeling? So if you're getting caught in. Oh, definitely. When you're in a trapping, there's a feeling of um, sort of like scarcity. It's like, it's a feeling like a fear of missing out. It's like, and of course it's normal to have it to some extent. There are times when I get invited to speak at an event where I know my friends, my fellow speaker friends who I bonded with are going to be at that event, but it clashes with my schedule and I can't be at that event. And then I get like um, FOMO, fear of missing out. It's like, oh my God, I can't be with them. I'm so sad that I have another event on that day. So that is, uh, so that to a, if, if, if you feel that constantly, that you have to be at every event and it's the trappings, it's the being at the event and the glamour of the event that matters more than the fact that I am sharing this event or uh, sharing my story. Or in the case of if you're working with animals, it's the, um, you know, if you're feeling like, no, I need to be um, helping a whole lot of animals and I need to be on stage. Or if you're a healer, it becomes more about, being a Hollywood healer and, and trying to get the movie stars and it becomes more about that than your passion in healing, then you know, you start to feel it. It starts to feel different. Here's the key. It starts to feel stressful. It loses the feeling of it being your passion and it being fun. Once it starts to feel stressful, that is the key. Oh, that's good. Because yeah. you know what? It's, it can be hard. It can feel hard to do, to follow our path sometimes, but 
when it starts to feel stressful indeed. Yeah. And it, it should feel exciting. It should really feel exciting. Of course, it doesn't mean you won't have challenges. The challenges or the stresses are uh, different. If you're helping animals and your passion is to help animals, you will be stressed when you know you can't help every animal and you will be stressed when um, an animal, you're dealing with an animal that can't be helped or if your passion is helping or reading for clients, for people, you you will feel a certain amount of stress when there's a particular client going through a rough time and you have to give them a message that's a really hard message. But what I'm talking about is the stresses of the glamour and the glitz. It's like the stress of um, feeling that, oh, I'm not getting paid as much as that person or why am I not invited to this event? Or it's those kinds of stresses that have nothing to do with the passion of the thing itself that's when you know it's like oh i've become competitive oh okay i've lost myself in the trappings um i yeah watch out when you start becoming competitive and when you start feeling stressed and things like that so i just love this it comes from the person who asked about uh remembering we're eternal beings but they said our purpose in general is to shine the love we have inside, no matter what we decide to do. Yes, I love that. Yeah, they asked it as a question, but I'm like, nope, that's just a statement. That is a statement. That is definitely our purpose. Definitely our purpose. And you can find your purpose by getting quiet, by going out in nature. For me, going out in nature and or listening to music uh, are two things that really help me when I feel stuck. And you're probably thinking, I'm already living my purpose. Why would I continue to be finding my purpose? Oh, I still have to go inward to find direction because I still get challenges thrown my way. Challenges don't stop. The more you are on your on the path to your purpose, you will find things that might derail you or things that happen that might um, just stress you out, you know, just things that happen. Um, I'm going through something right now where Danny can't come on the next trip with me. And I cannot believe how much that that has actually affected me. Um, but, but yes, I have to deal with that, but things have unfolded in a way that my brother is coming with me. Great. So that's a good thing. So, you know, things will happen all, all the time and I still need to turn inward and either listen to music or go and be in nature and um, and just allow and trust and love myself you have to love yourself when you don't love yourself you don't allow your purpose to unfold because you don't think you're worthy you are still needing other people's approval when you don't love yourself and needing other people's approval is a big one that derails you and actually, that's a big reason you mentioned a little earlier about approval, Abby. That is a big reason why people find it difficult to stay on their purpose. Is As you go along, following your purpose, following your passion, you might meet someone along the way that disapproves of what you're doing. And that will kind of cause you to derail or feel some stress. And that's the biggest reason for a lot of people that oh. they might stray from their purpose. And that's also how I think we get lull, lulled, lulled into, is that yes. the word? Yep. Lulled, lulled into, into false purposes when we're looking for approval from someone else. So you're like, oh, I guess I, you know, first example comes to mind is my parents wanted me to be a doctor. I guess my purpose is to be a doctor. And it's like, oh, is that actually what yeah. you want to do? And it might not be. And a lot of people, um, they just follow what is expected of them yes. by their parents, by their culture, by their community. Because when they're young, it starts to get shaped. The cultural expectations get shaped. And so they start to choose those subjects those um, at school. That's They start to choose those subjects to major in. And that's what they choose to study when they're too young to make their own decisions. And so they do it for the approval of their community, their parents, their grandparents, and so on, because it's expected of them. And they never really stop to think, but what is it, my passion? What did my soul come here to be and do and express? And so that's also another reason why many of us find it hard to find our purpose, because we're a uh, fear is another thing, because we might become afraid when we realize that our purpose is actually so different from what we're currently doing. So 
going off of that, there's actually a great comment here where it says a lot of women suffer from imposter syndrome and never feel good enough. And I think that that's exactly it. When you realize that maybe, oh my God, my purpose is big. And then you're terrified of like, how do I even go along the way? Um, But we have a couple of other beautiful comments. Izzy says, flowers don't compete with each other. They just bloom. Yes. I love that one. Yeah. In reference to making sure that you're not getting caught in trappings. And then I do have one question. Um, I was trying to find my purpose, but I lost my partner two months ago. How can I get back to it? Because it seems even harder now. So any tips you have for one, reconnecting with yourself, finding your purpose? And for the, specifically for the person who lost their partner, um, first of all, my heart goes out to you. I can't even imagine what that must feel like for you. So first of all, take all the time you need to heal, to heal from the grief and be gentle and be kind with yourself. But I want to assure you of one thing, your partner is in a beautiful place and your partner is actually going to help you to find your purpose. So slowly just allow, even allow your partner to come through and your partner is actually going to um, put things in your path. Just be open, be completely open. Don't fear the fact that you want to keep communicating with your partner um, and um, just also allow yourself the time to grieve. And for you now, This is really important for you to trust, trust your own inner self and your ability to feel and sense your partner and to feel and sense the other side and get all the help and support that you need. So, so thank you for being brave for posting that my, my heart really goes out to you and allow your purpose to unfold. And I would not be surprised if your purpose somehow involves communicating with your partner on the other side. So that's what I would like to say for that person. Thank you so much. Um, So for in general, would you, do you have any kind of basic tips for people trying to connect with their purpose? Like just. Yes. So if I can recap, so number one is Think of your purpose not as a vocation, not as a way that you're going to help the world, but as something that you personally are passionate about, something that will fill, would fulfill you personally. And at this point, at step one, don't even worry about how you want to impact the world or how great an impact you want to make or how you want to save the people. Save that for later. Save that for later. You just want to tap in to that feeling of this is what my passion is, getting up and doing this. So tap into that feeling. To break it down further, if you're having trouble tapping into that feeling, so step two would be to get out in nature or listen to music or anything along those lines, meditate, go for a walk and ask yourself these questions. Even before you go to bed at night, you can ask yourself these questions, ask your higher self, ask the other side, ask your guides, the angels say, please help me to get clarity on what is my passion. So that is step number two, finding that passion and getting clarity around it and taking the steps to find that passion, that little key, because that little key is what revs up your energy. Step three is check in with, do I love myself? Do I feel worthy of being, of doing uh, and being all that I can be? And do I feel worthy of being the best version of myself? Or do I feel I don't deserve it? So if you feel that you don't deserve it, start taking the steps to love yourself more. I have a ton of videos about that, about loving yourself. And then the fourth step is to keep just following your passion and allow yourself in whatever way, 
Like if it's helping animals, help the animals in your community, foster a pet and put out water for animals. If it's helping people, figure out ways on how you can help people. If it's writing, start writing, just writing, writing blogs, share your passion for writing on the internet. Um, start sharing. If it's a particular topic that you feel the world needs to hear, write it and share it on the internet. Um, so just start tapping into that and start doing it in small ways. So these are the tips I have for you to start with. And of course, anyone can do any of those tips at any time, but you also lead guided journeys to help uncover your purpose. We just did the entire last month, actually, in the sanctuary was dedicated to finding your purpose, right? Yes. So now I do a lot of deep guided journeys where I take people on their own, their journey to the other side to meet their loved ones. I actually believe everybody needs to die, in air quotes, before they actually die. Because the near-death experience taught me how to live. And this is why I develop processes to help you experience that without actually having to die. And I take people on these processes in my online sanctuary where I have processes to help you to get guidance from your loved ones on the other side to help you to um, find your purpose or connect with your deceased loved ones and things connect like Connect with that. your higher self as well. And connect with your higher self and get messages from your higher self and your deceased loved ones so that you can be the best version of yourself while you're here living your life. And then, of course, you do have, I'm just going to shout in there, anyone who is in Europe, Anita is heading there in one week now? In one week. So we've got one week Austria and Prague, Prague. And you will be doing processes at both of these, right? I will be doing deep guided journeys. Now, when I do them in person, physical, in a room where I'm with you, for me, they feel super powerful. And the feedback I get is that it is more powerful because we are all putting our energies together and it's multiplying exponentially. So if you can come to a physical event, the next one I'm doing in the US is at Omega in June, which is upstate New York. But coming up in the next week or two are Prague and uh, Vienna. So please, please join me. And I'm going to admit this and I have to say this. I do not like selling. I don't like selling. <laughs> right as I put the banner up across the bottom. <laughs> so keep the banner there. That helps me. It's okay. That's what my job is. You don't have to yes. sell. I'm just going to interject. So it's Abby's with... job to interject. I don't like selling. It, it's, it's just something that doesn't come naturally to me. However, I'm constantly getting people saying, when are you coming to Europe? When are you coming here? When are you coming? So please come to my events so that I don't have to keep also, <laughs> so many people who go, oh, I didn't know you have a sanctuary and you've had it for three, four years now. And you're like, I don't like to yes. sell people on it or, or um, oh, I didn't know you were coming to Europe. And I get that all the time. The number of people that write, oh, I heard you were just in Europe. Or when we post the photos after I've been at a, an event and we post the photos in social media and people were like, you were just here. I live here. I didn't know. Why didn't I know? So please, please tune in, check my website, check my social media. Please do that because selling doesn't come naturally to me. <laughs> so help me out. <laughs> Uh, so, and, and so, yeah, I appreciate you all tuning in. Um, Abby, is there anything else we want to say? Um, I'm just reading through some comments. We've got someone saying great tips. Um, oh, there's someone who says people indeed don't know anymore what their passion is. And as a therapist, I say to them, what in your childhood did you love to do? Often there lies a key in, in childhood. So. I love that. That's a beautiful, you know, when you come back to that, it, it can be a great starting point. And if nothing else, it'll, you'll do some fun things for a couple of days. Exactly. That is a good, a good tip as well. And it's a good key. And, and also what is it that you like to do when you're in play in, and uh, when you're not actually in work mode? So those are also good tips to take you to your passion and to what your purpose is. And sometimes your purpose, oh, it, look, it looks like it's frozen, but I think I'm back. Um, and sometimes your purpose may not be something that is your livelihood, 
but there may be a different way that you're making a stream of income so that you can keep following your purpose and, and following your passion. So I think that was a very wise thought to end on exactly what you said. People keep going, Oh, if it's my purpose, that's how I make money. Right? Nope. Not, not necessarily. No. Well, a lot of food for thought in this one, but I think we've covered just about everything. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, please click subscribe, like, and depending on what platform you're on, it really helps me when you do that. And please, please come to my events. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.